Okay, so now that we're all set up, we're going to start painting our um, designs. Remember, you need to have everything labeled. Every single section should be labeled. Labeled. Every single um, section needs to be in order that matches the wheel. And um, if whatever one section is, it should be all the same color, um, hue, tint, and shade. You know, you figure out where all those things go. Um, so that should all be done before you even think about putting any paint on here because once the paint is on you can't go back and change these things okay okay so I'm gonna start off with the primaries um, I'm gonna do the hue remember that's the pure color straight out of like the paint bottle um, these are the only colors you guys are gonna have to paint the entire color wheel um, so we're gonna talk about um, painting the hue which is blue, yellow, red. This is straight from the bottle. This is the pure color, the hue um, for these. Then we'll do the tint and shade for each one of those. And um, then we'll talk about secondary and intermediate colors and doing the um, tints and shades for those. Now, as like something to help you, you guys are going to get some mixing papers. And I have ones for the primaries. So this side is the primary for red, yellow, and blue. And you guys will be mixing right on this paper. And then same thing with the secondary colors, you're gonna mix right on the paper. Now the, um, and I also have one for all six intermediate colors. Okay, so we'll get to that then. Now these mixing papers are helpful um, to remind you what to add, when to add it, um, to make those colors. But this is, ends up at the end getting thrown away. This is like your painter's palette that you wash off at the end, right? But since it's paper, we'll just crumple it up, crum crumple it up and throw it away at the end of the project. Um, I have in the past had some kids mix their colors, but then just leave them on here. Like I said, this gets thrown away because this is just for you to mix the colors to then paint them on the actual artwork, right? This is the artwork. The colors have to be mixed here, but then painted on here. If you're mixing on your artwork, it's some you know some paintings you can do that but in this case the color needs to be pre-mixed because you will end up making a big mess while you're mixing so you mix on the mixing paper hence why it's called the mixing paper but then you have to pick up the paint from here and paint it in the correct location on your artwork okay okay so let's start off with um, what you need you guys will have buckets um, you should each get a paper towel and then you're gonna need some brushes um, Neatness is a really big part of the grade for the color wheel, like neatness and painting. And so I have a variety of different uh, sizes and styles of brushes. You can pick what works for you. If you're a person that you have simpler shapes, you might pick a, a brush, you know, that's, um, you know, maybe a little bit bigger. But maybe if you have like a really crazy shape that you're painting in a really small shape, the smaller the shape, the smaller the brush. So you might want something like this one here um, or like this brush here. And it's up to you if you like one like a flat brush or if you like more of like the pointed end brush. Um, that's totally like artist choice. Okay, so I'm going to start off with red. Now I don't really need to paint red here, right? I can if I want to. But I can add red here only if I want to like help mix because I can really just take red straight from the plate. You know what I mean? Like again, I don't care what the mixing paper looks like. It's really for you to it's to help you mix. Okay. Okay. So and I'll have color wheels out there like colorful color wheels like this. So if you're ever like, oh, I don't remember what that color is supposed to look like, you can always refer back to this. So I'm gonna use, um, you know, maybe like. Uh, I think I'm gonna use this bigger brush actually to mix. And um, I'm just gonna grab uh, um, some red. I'll put some red over here. I'm actually gonna take like a blob of red. So I'm like scooping it up with my brush and I'm just gonna like wipe it off right here over on the mixing paper. Okay, so I have like a nice blob. Um, and then I'm gonna take the brush that I'm actually gonna paint with, which is this smaller brush. And I am going to make sure that paint only is going to go on the bristles, okay? And maybe even only on the bottom half of the bristles. So you are in control of where the paint goes. So if you end up with paint all over your brush and it's all up in this metal portion or and, and it's on your fingers too, you are probably going to not be painting very neatly on your paper. So 
control where the paint goes, only have it on the ends of the bristles, and then you can control it better on your paper. So I'm gonna locate where I have my hue of red, which is right here. And I want you guys, as you're painting, to paint the edges of the shape first very, very carefully. And it's okay if you get paint on the Sharpie. We will go over the Sharpie one more time before you turn them in. So I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna outline this shape. I am controlling where the paint is. If I feel like I have too much paint on my brush, I'm gonna get some off of it on my mixing paper here. And then I'm gonna go back to my painting. You should be really paying attention, taking your time. Now, I often see students leave little white edges in their artwork that all of those little unpainted spaces to collectively they add up and they make your artwork not really look finished so i really want you to make sure that not only do you outline this the space and fill in the entire thing uh, but then you also go back and get any of those little white spaces if you've left any so now that i outlined the shape i'm getting some more red paint and i'm painting the whole thing red and that's kind of like a big shape so I can go back and forth and get as much paint as I need my little R is still in there I'm really not worried about it um, maybe we'll do something at the end if you really want to cover up those little labels so now right now I'm going back and evening out my brush strokes because they do stay visible so I'm gonna kind of smooth them out making sure I stay in the lines being really careful about that okay so I need to check my work before I move on I need to ask myself did I get all the white spots did I make sure I stayed in the lines before I move on to something else right you need to make sure that it's completely filled in before you move on okay so it's completely filled in I stayed in the lines I'm ready to move on I also got a bunch of paint on the table so I'm gonna wipe that up because I was painting off the edge. That's totally okay. If you do that, just clean up after yourself. No big deal. Okay, um, I have uh, paint on my brush here. Always clean your brushes. Bounce it off the bottom of the container. And then press the bristles on the side. And you do not want water in your brushes for um, painting. You want to get that water out. So I'm going to take it over to my paper towel and really make sure I dry it off. Okay, so now I'm going to go to the tint and shade for red. Okay, so I want to make sure that I have red to work with on my mixing paper. And I'm going to do the tint first. Now when you are painting a tint, you always want to start with white. So I'm going to get white on here first. And I'm going to make sure I have a decent amount. Because again, I'm going to have to paint this whole section with it. Now it's not a huge section, right? My section is, is this one right here and it's not massive, but like I'm gonna need some paint to work with, okay? Okay, so I have that. And then um, I'm also gonna need, I'm gonna start with a lighter of the two for my shade. So I'm gonna start with red and then I will add black to that, okay? Okay, so let's see, a brush to mix with. I'm gonna take this one right here and I'm gonna take just the teeniest bit of red. If I add too much and add it to my white to make the tint, um, it, if it gets too dark, if I can't tell the difference between the hue and the tint, it doesn't count. All I need to know is that, all I need to see is that your tint is lighter than your hue and your shade needs to be darker than your hue. So I'm gonna try to keep this paint in this little circle. So I'm gonna like continuously mix it in the circle, trying to like keep it all centered. Make sure the entire thing is mixed. Does it look lighter than the hue, which is the pure color red? If the answer is yes, then you can start painting with it. Now, I got paint all over a lot of this brush, so I'm not gonna paint with that brush. I'm gonna make sure I clean it, make it nice and neat before I go in and start painting because, again, if the paint is all over the place, it's gonna be on your brush, it's gonna be all over the place on your project. So here's where I labeled red tint. So I'm gonna get some paint on the end of my bristles. I'm gonna outline the shape first with my paint. And then once I've outlined it, I can fill it in. 
taking my time to stay in the lines, even out those brush strokes, any little white spots, paint them. When we're done, not a single area on this whole artwork is remaining unpainted. Everything should be painted, no white spaces whatsoever. Okay, so I finished painting my tint of red, which is pink. And your pink might be a little bit darker than mine, it might be a little bit lighter than mine. As long as it is lighter than your hue, I'll accept it, okay? Okay, so now I'm ready to go on to my shade of red. So you always wanna start with a lighter of the two things that you're mixing. So I'm mixing red and what do you mix with? Any hue to make a shade, you mix black. Black plus the hue makes a shade. So the, the, the hue is always gonna be lighter. The black is the most powerful of all of the colors. So you're always gonna add black after. So I already have red here. And let me tell you what, when I say black is the most powerful of all the colors, I truly mean it. When you add it in, I, what I always do is I take a blob and I kind of like set a little bit to the side and I add in the tiniest amount because it is so powerful. It will change the paint um, really fast. And if you add too much, sometimes you can't even see the hue. So I just added a little bit. I would like to add a little bit more. I'd rather add it slowly than too much at once and then have to start over because I made it too dark. You know, if I can't see any red in there because the black overpowered it, then I'm, I'm not gonna accept that, right? It needs to be a shade of red. Okay, so I mixed it. It almost looks kind of like um, like a maroon-ish color, except no purple in it. So that's my shade of red right there. And again, I have paint all up on my brush. So I'm gonna wipe it off. I'm gonna rinse it. I'm gonna take a little bit just on the ends, find my red shade section, paint that in. So I'm gonna do the outline, just like I did for my other two spaces, and then fill it in. Always turn the paper, if it feels awkward for you to paint a section, turn the paper um, so that it feels more comfortable. Just don't stick your, your wrist in any painted areas. You know, like right here. I don't wanna stick my wrist in any paint and smear it. All right, so I have one full section painted. So you're gonna paint the hue, tint, and shade of each color. You're gonna paint all three things of each color before you move on to the next one. So now I could go down to yellow, that's next on my mixing paper, and then just continue on with blue after that. And then we'll talk about the secondary and intermediate colors. Oh, I almost forgot one thing. These paper plates with the primaries and white and black on them, um, you need to mix your or, or clean your brushes 100% before you stick um, your brush into them. They need to stay these pure colors for all of my classes all day. So you, that is totally possible for it to happen. Um, so I shouldn't see like blue in the yellow because you should have cleaned your brush to make sure that that doesn't happen. Same thing the white, it should look like pure white. So never put your brush in anything before you clean it 100%. And also never trust that the last person that used your brush cleaned it as well as they should have. I have th seen that happen so many times. Kids come in, they grab a brush off the tray to go get started, they start painting with it, and they're like, oh my gosh, there's blue in this brush, and they're trying to paint their yellow section or something. And then it messes up their project. So I can help you fix that. But um, you know, just make sure you've always cleaned your brushes before you just start you know, mixing and painting because I can guarantee that a lot of people aren't gonna clean their brushes as well as they should have, so don't let that happen to you. All right, so I finished my primary hue, tint, and shade sections. I'm ready to start on my secondaries, which is right on this side of um, the mixing paper. And um, 
always when you're mixing these colors, remember if you forget how to do it, I have a little hint on here for you, uh, but it's also on the wheel, the way that you remember how to mix colors is you find the two primaries. So for example, we're gonna do violet first. You find the two primaries, red and blue, and um, you know whatever color you're trying to mix should be right in the middle. So violet is here, and I'm looking for the two primaries on either side of it to figure out what to make, or what to use to make it. So I can do the same thing with green. If I look here at green, I look at the two primaries on either side of green, and that's yellow and blue, right? So I mix yellow and blue to make green, and with orange, I wanna mix it. I look at the two primaries on either side of it, and that's red and yellow, so that's what I'll use to make orange. So I'm gonna make um, violet here first. My number one tip is make enough, right? Always make sure you've made enough before you um, start moving on, because not only are you making enough to paint for your hue, but then you also wanna make enough to mix for your shade, um, or for your tint and for your shade. So just make enough the first time, and um, that often will save you so much time going back trying to make it again and again. Um, and you always want to start with the lighter of the two colors. So which one do you think is lighter, red or blue? Red is going to be the lighter of the two. So I'm going to start off with some red. I'm going to put a blob of red right here. And like wipe it off the brush and if you are like being timid about how much paint you take you don't need to do that because I will give you guys more paint if you run out so I always feel like it's better to take a little bit more than what you think you made or what, what you think you need um, than not enough because again it is like a huge time saver so now I'm gonna need to grab some blue so I'm gonna clean my brush before I stick it in any of the paints um, if you had blue over on your paper here um, on this section in the, the blue, as long as it's like pure blue, you can use that as well. I think I'm just gonna do that. So I'm gonna take that paint and um, mix it together. Now, I'd say the number one thing that most people do is they add too much blue and they make it a blue-violet on accident first. Now, if you accidentally make it a blue-violet, and you can check on, on my color wheels, I'll have them on the table, you can compare them. Um, if you're not sure, did I make it too blue or too red and made a red violet? If you did that, you can just go with it. You can then just go onto the red violet section if you made red violet on accident and then make your tint and shade of red violet. Because remember, it doesn't matter if it's in the wrong spot on the mixing paper, as long as you paint it in the correct location on your color wheel, that's fine with me. So I'm gonna start adding in my blue here. And I often get students say, I don't, do you think, Mrs. Nicholas, do you think that this is the right color? I am gonna have color wheels on the table for you to check that for yourself. I am not going to check every single color every time you mix it. I want you guys to be independent learners and um, figure that out for yourself. So once you've mixed it, sometimes it is hard to tell when it's like in um, a pile like this. So often what I will do is like paint a little bit somewhere else, like in one of these extra spots. And if it looks like the right color then to me, then I know, it's probably hard to see on the video, but um, then I know, okay, did I compare that to the color wheel and it looks like the right color? Yes, okay, then it must be good, okay? So I'm gonna wipe off this extra paint here and then I'm gonna grab the brush. That was kind of like the brush I was using to mix with. So now I'm gonna paint in I, I did make it a violet, so I'm gonna find my violet section on my wheel, I'm gonna paint my hue for violet now. All right, so now I'm going to get some white and make my tint of violet. So I still have plenty here in this little spot, so I can just put my white here, my blob of white. I can just take a little bit of this violet right here that was extra from the hue that I just that I just made and I can mix it up as long as it's lighter than the hue it's good so don't remake a violet if you don't have to I mean that's why you always want to make sure you made enough because I still have some left over in this spot that I'll take over to make my shade so now I'm gonna clean this brush pick up some of my tint and make sure I paint it on the right spot on my color wheel. 
All right, and never do we mix the black and white together. If you do that, like you can't take some from your tint and try to make your shade. You have to start with the hue um, plus black. If you try to do that, you will make something called a tone. And um, a tone is a real thing. It's, um, so we have tints, we have shades, and we have tones. Tints are the hue plus white. Shades are the hue plus black. Tones are the hue plus gray. Um, so that's, like I said, a real thing. However, that is not something that we are adding in our color wheel. So that's why you don't wanna use any of the tint, um, mixing it with your shade, or you will make a tone, which again, you'll, you'll be able to tell it looks funny whenever you're making it. It just looks like a really like faded out color because it's gray plus that color. So I got a little bit of black to add in to my um, hue here of violet. I'm making the shade now, violet plus black. And I'm just gonna get a little bit more black. Darker colors like this, you wanna be careful. If you add too much black, it will entirely overpower it and just look like black. So be careful that you don't add too, too much. I think I added enough there. It's darker, but it's not too dark. All right, so I painted my whole violet section. Now I'm ready to move on to my other two secondary colors. Okay, now I'm done with all my primary and secondary um, hues, pure color, tint. Uh, the hue plus white and shades, the hue plus black. So now I'm gonna move on to my intermediate colors. So pay attention to the fact that there are two different mixing papers. This one has all six intermediate colors on it. Um, so, you know, I'm gonna start with, I think I'm gonna do my um, red orange and um, yellow orange first. So I'm gonna do those two. And let's say I start making red orange. I'm trying to make red orange and I accidentally make yellow orange first. That's fine, I can still mix that here. It really doesn't matter where things are exactly if it's not following this perfectly because remember, this is just your painter's palette that at the end, you're gonna end up throwing it away. You know, you're gonna save it through each class but at the end you end up throwing it away. It's just most important that you put all of your colors over here onto your project, okay? All right, so, um, Always start with the weaker of the two colors, remember? So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna go right here with red orange, so I'm gonna start with yellow. And I'm gonna get a really nice amount, like wipe it off, cleaning my brush, bouncing it off the bottom, take it over on my paper towel, dry it off. Remember, we don't want water on our brushes for this. And then I'm doing red orange, so I'm gonna take a decent amount of red so that it is stronger. In this so it looks like I kind of just went to orange and you can check your colors if you're unsure I'm gonna wipe off all the excess I'm gonna get a clean brush and add a little bit more red because I'm not quite at red yet all right so here's my color wheel I can compare it to um, I'm probably gonna make different ones for you guys that'll just look like my project um, but this is for the video what I'm gonna be using, so I'm gonna add a little bit more red. And remember, it needs to be darker than, it needs to be more red than your orange. If it's not, then it's not gonna count for your grade. So I can compare on here, it's definitely more red than my orange, but it's definitely not pure red. And then it matches quite well with the red orange over on the color wheel. I'm gonna use a different brush to paint with so I can really stay in the lines making sure that the paint is only on the lower half of the bristles. And I'm starting with my hue for red-orange first. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little bit of my red-orange over here to make my shade. I'm gonna start with white for my tint, so I'm gonna get a nice decent sized blob of white. Mix and paint both of those. 